Welcome to another episode of the Dentology Podcast, where we discuss the business of dentistry. In this podcast series, we'll be discussing all the non-clinical aspects of dentistry, from goodwill values, finance, marketing, how to buy and sell a dental practice mindset, through to where you can invest your money in team management issues. My name is Andy Acton, and I'm joined by my co-host, Chris Strevens. Let's jump straight into it. So welcome to our latest episode of Dentology, the Business of Dentistry podcast. And today we're very fortunate to have Zubair Bagassi join us. Um, Zubair is a creator of Synergy Dental, a group of dental practices. Um, also the Synergy Dental Partnership model, which we're going to have a chat about, which is really interesting. And also a triathlete, which is a no mean feat in itself. So welcome. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, chaps. Yeah. Uh, good to see you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm glad you managed to fit us in between your running and uh, all your other stuff, Zubair. Thank you. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> so before we get into the, the remarkable success that you've you've had in dentistry, could we sort of thank just you. set the, the landscape in terms of who you are, where you came from, what was your upbringing like? How did it all begin? Uh, born and bred in Bolton, um, uh, one of uh, four siblings, uh, the only one that went to university. Oh, well, um, that's interesting. Does that come really? up? Are you oldest or youngest? I'm the middle. I'm I'm, I'm the middle child syndrome. So the one that's uh, neglected and the one that gets the second <laughs> um, You know, you've got to uh, let it go at some point. Um, you've got to let it go uh, at some point. Yeah, I've got to air it sometime. <laughs> so, um, uh, lovely siblings. Um, uh, Some went into business. Um, um, my elder sister got married early. Um, and um, yeah, uh, so born and bred from Bolton, um, went to the University of Birmingham in 2000, uh, spent um, six part years in, in Birmingham and then came back, <laughs> grounded again in Bolton and uh, married with three children. Um, and uh, la- the story goes on. You've wow. obviously got strong roots in the north, though, because quite often people um, go and, you know, to whichever dental school they go to, and then often that's where they kind of, that becomes their hub, that becomes their new home, mm. and they stay kind have of you, where have they you, qualify. Have you been to Birmingham? Yes. Have, have you been to Birmingham? Uh, yeah, but, it's, <laughs> but pra- perhaps, perhaps it's changed a bit you since want, you qualified. Would you want to settle in Birmingham? <laughs> <laughs> All of those listeners and, uh, who are from Birmingham. Just offended uh, everyone. Like in, in fairness, the, 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 um, the, the, the last, the last, the last time. Birmingham looks nice in the evening. <laughs> During the daytime. In the dark, you read. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's progressed really, um, uh, since, um, you know, since, uh, 2005 when I uh, when I qualified so um, I do have a practice in Birmingham right. and I'm, 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 it's just for a joke really but <laughs> I do often visit Birmingham that almost feels um, like that time we had the investment guy where we had to say um, just to let you know the value of your investments could go up as well as down uh, those of you who visit Birmingham it's fine <laughs> We're well, sorry, <laughs> but you are very passionate about the north, aren't you? You're very committed to the north. You're 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 always talking it up. You know, you're trying to elevate that that part of the country too. Um, well, uh, my, my my roots belong um, in in Sunny Bolton, and um, I, all my family is here. Uh, my full upbringings here. Um, you know, my full friend circles uh, in the Greater Manchester area. Um, so yeah, I have to uh, uh, blow the trumpet. Yeah, quite right too. Quite Absolutely right. proud of where you are. That's right. Yeah, no, no. And you, whenever I've spoke to you, you, you are so incredibly positive about everything. You know, you just have that mindset that says we can do it and we will do it. Where, where does where does that come from? Is that is that a family trait? Is it something that going back to that middle child syndrome? Is it something that you've always had to to push yourself to achieve and get you, mm. yourself noticed? Do you know where that comes from? I, I think um, the, the the friends uh, around me um, uh, have all been through a, a very tough uh, journey, which has made them very successful uh, in their lives, um, and I think. Uh, uh, so long as you have the mindset that uh, failure is just another opportunity to learn, um, and so long as you have that, um, where you, you you do fail and you fail multiple times, um, but then you, you you have the ability to sort of reflect on that um, and then make it better. I mean, uh, the light bulb didn't come around overnight; it took over a thousand efforts. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, for a simple circuit like that to work. And um, I think that if you, if you follow the same principle that um you know uh like a basketball player for instance for instance you know 
to get into the hoop. It's, it's not in the first attempt. So it's a thousand attempts before you get it mm-hmm. in. Um, and then, it, you know, and, 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 and it goes on. So failure is an opportunity to, to learn. And I think mm-hmm. um, uh, for, for, for those that are um, uh, on, the, on the learning pathway, uh, it's important to make mistakes, um, and that's part of learning. Hmm. Um, and I think you're right. And I, I, I think it's it's very easy um, to talk about failure once you've had some success. Once things are going well, it's very easy to oh well, this went wrong and that went wrong because you've got these successes that, that have kind of come your way, and and, and it's it's easier. Um, did you have did you have failures quite early on when you qualified and you know, you've obviously got a business empire now that we'll talk about but did things not go well in the in the early days did you have some failures where it rocked you and you thought oh like is this for me could I do hmm. this am I, am I on the right path um, no I think um, I was going to go into law before uh, I went into dentistry um, and um, I, I I soon changed my career options when I entered um, uh, sixth form um, and um, I think. Uh, uh, again, decisions change, and um, uh, you know your. Um, I, w- I was very set um, in in studying law. Mm. In fact, um, and um, Zubair, can I just changed. ask what changed your mind? Uh, I, I had a careers meeting um, just before uh, I enrolled onto the uh, the the subjects in sixth form, and. My careers advisor advised me that you know the statistics in um, being able to get a, a a a job at the end of your guaranteed job at the end of law um, is one in eight. And I thought I ain't gonna be putting my time and efforts um, studying and uh, you know sacrificing evenings and weekends when friends are going out, etc., just to have a one in eight chance um, yeah. of uh, of having a career. Um, so. Uh, and, and then I had a, I had a, um, a, a really uh, interesting um, uh, talk with uh, my granddad, um, who sat me down and said, "Look, um, uh, dentistry is um, is a career um, that um, is a secure career, and not only that, I know that you like your arts and you like your sciences, and you you've got this um, uh, uh, the flair for um, uh, sort of almost um, like an arty." Um, sort of background, mm-hmm. um, and, and and therefore, you know, this is this would be uh, a career that you should choose. Wow. You, you should you should you should, you should sort of consider, and and and, and I did. Um, I have no family in in, in dentistry. I was going to say, where um, did your granddad get that from? Is it just he he, he so, looked at it and then just gave you some uh, valuable so, advice? Yeah. So, yeah, but my uncles are all in pharmacy, um, optometry, right. Um, uh, in, in, in various of the medical fields, but not in dentistry. Um, and, I, and I suppose um, uh, he reflected on that and he's probably thought, I wish my kids went into um, dentistry instead. So I think uh, you should do this. You should, do, wow. you should, you should follow that uh, pathway. Um, and, and I did, and I actually have never looked back. So, yeah, that's so brilliant. Um, what, what a great bit of advice, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. To, to sit down with you and say, hey, I think... And I'll tell you what was interesting, Zubair, was that, that bit about the, um, the creativity you know, and the, the the craftsmanship that you that you can yes. do as a dentist. And I think that's a forgotten yeah. thing, isn't it? You know, it's people see it as sort of almost like a very functionary thing, but actually, there's there is a real amount of creativity and elegance and using yeah. your own skills to yeah, to absolutely. create. I think it's brilliant. That's a really good lesson for people learning and uh, listening to this. I think. But I did end up getting married to a lawyer, so um, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> by proxy. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't get away from it completely. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um, uh, so, something yeah. else is you're you're clearly big on your 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 fitness and 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 your yes. physical health. And you said before that fitness can help with the psychological burdens um, that dentists carry. Uh, how has this helped you? Have you always been into fitness, or is that yeah. something that's come yeah. on over over no, time? No, no, no. No. So um, since um, since I was in school. Um, uh, you know, 11, 12 years old. I've, I've, uh, I've, I've been out running. Um, uh, you know, early mornings of of the weekend, 6 a.m. Uh, we used to go out running. Just me and my friend, um, and um, I used to go to the gym. Uh, and you know, in them days, never used to have uh, David Lloyd's or 
uh, sort of <laughs> fitness or anything like that in them days. It was just a little little um, a, a gym as part of a um, a Bolton Lads and Girls Club. Um, so we, I used to go religiously three times a week um, and um, used to make time for it. And at that point, I realised the value of um, uh, de-stressing, um, uh, you know, the mind and body and soul thing. So um, I've, I've carried it through. Um, but uh, over the last sort of, I'd say, five, six years, um, I've been focusing more um, on uh, uh, body weight, uh, you know, using your own body weight uh, and mm. triathl- triathlon training. Um, so I, I, I very rarely pick up any um, physical weights. Um, yeah. mm. uh, I've, I've just, I think I stunt my growth um, you know, weight, uh, lifting heavy weights over my shoulders. Um, so I've, uh, uh, I'm only You're five, five foot four, four right? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, so I, I blame it on that. Um, uh, so uh, I've, I've, uh, swimming, cycling, running is the thing that I, I, I really, really enjoy now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and hence, um, uh, you know, I signed up for, um, the Ironman in 2018, the, the full Ironman yeah. in Bolton it was. Um, that was that was uh, that that was good. And uh, last year I did the half Ironman again in Bolton. Mm. Um, well, it's no mean I've... feat. It's no mean feat. But and it's lovely to hear the impact it has because I think you're right. I think you know I, I long for a day when we just talk about our health because at the moment we talk about mental health and then when we yes. talk about our health, that kind of is the physical bit. But it'd be quite nice if we got to a stage where we just talked about our health because it's all joined up. I think if yeah. you're physically fit there's a much stronger likelihood that you're going to have a better mental well-being. But the two, just they're, they're not to be talked about separately. You know, there's no, such I a strong agree. link between them. I, I totally agree. And um, uh, the, the way I, I sort of explain it to my kids as well um, uh, uh, is that you look, you, you've got to circulate your blood flow and you've got to all the, uh, you know, the rust um, uh, <laughs> that exists in your pipes and, uh, uh, you know, the build-up, uh, the blood flow just... Uh, uh, so flushes it all out uh, as a way to explain it to them the the, the importance of um, uh, fitness and um, keeping a clear head, mm. um, and um, uh, you know I, I think it's really important. I think the the connection between the um, physical um, wellness and your mental wellness uh, mm. is, is truly phenomenal, and I think it's certainly um, uh, misrepresented. Mm. I think it's a great message to give to your kids as well because if they can follow the same path as as you, they're on. Um, you're on a good road. So let's have a chat about um, Synergy, your, mm, your group of yeah. dental practices. So um, you started out as, with a squat practice. Is that right? That's yeah. how it began. So yeah. tell us, tell yeah. us the story as to, as to how, that, how that came about. Because I assume prior to that, were you working as an associate somewhere? I was a, um, uh, a vocational trainee in, right. um, in the West Midlands. Um, and um, I, uh, before I graduated, um, I had a, I had a sort of um, inclination to aim to go back up north. Um, so when I um, I did my vocational training, I did it with um, uh, Amrit Bandal oh, um, okay. in Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, very well, uh, very well known, great guy. Um, mm. Honestly, genuinely great guy. Um, and um, he, uh, I had an opportunity um, uh, to discuss a lot of um, uh, you know plans. Uh, you know the ins and outs. He took me to a lot of the. Um, the cool. What a great to mentor to have in the early days. Mm, yeah. Wow. Yeah. L- LDCs. He got me involved with um, uh, e- e- even Baz. Uh, I used to work for Baz on a weekend, and I, I did some assistant posts for him for a few months for him as well. Um, and um, again, just to see that other yeah. side of the industry what was was very useful. Um, and um, so. Uh, at, at that point, um, I started writing to the PCTs at the time, Primary Care Trusts, pre-2006. <laughs> so this is about the 2005, coming up to 2006 time. No. Um, and um, never knew how it really worked, but Amrit told me, look, the contract's about to change um, and you just can't open up anywhere, yeah. etc. cetera. Um, so I started writing to the Primary Care Trusts at the time, Bolton, Wigan, um, Manchester, Blackpool. Um, and um, we had, uh, I had an invitation from um, some of them, um, uh, knowing that I'm still a, a vocational trainer. So you're a VT and, at this time. I'm yeah. a VT wow. at this point, yes. So it was early, early stages of the VT. So um, I, I got invited for a second um, presentation. The first one, 
uh, was more of a directional one in what you need to prepare for business plan, et cetera, et cetera, um, demographic data, blah, blah, blah. And then, um, uh, so I did, I took six months to prepare. Um, still in my um, uh, VT, uh, <laughs> I, I, I went, went along um, college. You were very nonchalant about that. That's, that's quite yeah, cool. You're yeah, telling the story like, this is what everybody <laughs> does. This is, this is ridiculous. Yeah. This is great. Well, we, did, we did a lecture for about 200 VTs, and I think the most important thing they were interested about was what car they might be able to buy later. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 they had no idea about tax. That was the other yeah. thing we, we learned. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I, I, went, I went along, um, uh, new suit, new haircuts. Um, and, um, uh, <laughs> sharp suit? Did you have a sharp you know, suit on? Uh, it was a very sharp suit. <laughs> and um, I went in, um, took about a uh, good an hour and a half or so for the presentation. I had a really good presentation, um, a, a, a full business plan. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, they, they shook my hand and they said, look, um, uh, this is this is very, very impressive. And... Um, uh, you've got your property. Um, I said, um, I've looked at some. Um, uh, so, uh, I, 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 which I did, and, and um, in the six months building up to this final presentation, I did um, procure um, some provisional properties um, uh, uh, in an area that uh, was, was was suitable. So, um, I, had, I had it all secured. Um, and then once um, the contract was signed, uh, which they offered me a, 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 an NHS contract, um, and um, yeah, uh, I secured a property, um, got it refurbished, um, and um, it's a one surgery practice uh, when we started. Wow! And out of interest, did you? Um, because uh, knowing how banks are uh, not particularly uh, keen on lending money to squat practices, especially some chap who's um, still in his VT or about to finish. Did you manage funding? Was it family money or did you have to just put your own money in or a bit of both? So the, the, the original, um, the loan that I got for the property itself, um, uh, that was uh, almost like a seed fund from the bank. Wow. Um, I put a, a large deposit down myself. Uh, yeah. uh, very quickly that was cleared up. Um, the actual freehold itself, the 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 the, the actual equipment and the the whole refurbishments was all self-funded. Um, so I've always kept it so that the the property doesn't belong um, within the company itself. It yeah. stays outside of the company, mm. and there's a leasehold agreement between landlord and um, leaseholder. Um, so uh, I, 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 I think that um, uh, was the starting point. Wow. Um, and then, um, uh, but it was almost like a, a you know, a, a startup. Uh, mm. uh, can so can I could... ask you a question, Zubek? It's one of the questions that we're asked. So we bought Frank Taylor's twenty odd years ago, something like that, two thousand, and, yeah. and we took we took a big loan to buy it. And I, I, and Andy and I both get asked, well, didn't you? What about the risk? Because obviously we had like proper jobs. <laughs> you know that were paid by a salary and stuff like that no, and no. and we, we sort of say for no moment did we ever think it was a a risk really because we were just so sure it's going to work was that the same with you you just thought well you know it's, yeah. it's going to work um, absolutely because um uh the the actual equipments and the the the, the goodwill elements um uh, that's where really the risk is um within bricks and mortar property itself um there's very little risk in that mm. um i knew i could make it work um i was um, working as a strong associate as a as a vt um i knew my business side I, I i mean by that time i i read up the whole bda toolkit on how to um manage a practice um from hr to governance to mm. um everything um that ent- he had, they had a toolkit at the time if you remember um yeah. And um, so, in terms of risk, and um, it, it was it, it was uh, it, it was at a risk for me actually. Mm. Um, yeah. Remarkable, really remarkable. Yeah, and, and was there a bigger plan beyond this practice? Was it a case of <laughs> I've qualified, I just want to have my own practice. Let me get in there. Once I've got that, that's good. Or were you always sitting there saying this synergy is going to be big? Did, did you already have in your mind this wide platform of what it was going to become? Yeah, because um, uh, ultimately, when I when I did make the decision of um, setting up a, a brand new practice, which is in line with the um, the long longer term vision. Um, remember, at the time, I had um, uh, friends that were a few years my senior uh, who were already very successful in their respective fields, 
um, are all sort of linked in with the sort of franchising model, the joint venture partnership model. Um, and uh, to sustain a- any business, either you're there yourself or you have a, um, a-, a-, a system which supports mm-hmm. itself. And in that system, um, it was always um, uh, to have a-, a partner within each of the practices. Um, so you then marry up um, a-, a-, a central corporate system um, that surrounds and supports the uh, the heart of each practice supported um, by a, a partner with a vested interest. Um, at the mm. Specsavers model, um, uh, the the various of the models that exist within the um, uh, you know other healthcare um, environments. So um, Synergy was formed. Um, the name Synergy um, was intricately um, given um, because it means to working together uh, for better results. Um, so and, and that's where the name came from, um, with a view that you work together with, um, uh, you know, uh, the profession, the other partners, um, the uh, commissioners, etc. Um, and as a whole, you make it work. Um, mm. So, so you, so you were obsess about systems and processes. That must be. Uh, but I mean, I'm I'm sort of robotic when it comes to systems and processes and um, automation and. IT development to support systems, um, so that you 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 you're not relying on um, uh, emotion, and mm. you're not relying on um, uh, personalities, mm. and, and you're not relying mm. on a bad day. So yeah. uh, you know things operate um, uh, like clockwork. Mm. So thinking about COVID, for lots of people, COVID um, made them kind of almost revisit their model. Um, and mm. the improvements of digital workflows, virtual consultations, uh, remote working systems, all, all those things kind of came on. I think we probably took a five year step forward in, in six months because we had to, because businesses needed to accommodate it because of, of what was happening. Was your business already in good shape for that? Did you yes, have so systems and processes? To, I'm not saying it was easy for you, but it yeah. was perhaps easier than it would have been for some. So um, a, a lot of our business model operates um, digitally uh, in terms of the systems and processes, mm-hmm. um, the back-end functions, um, our software system. Um, uh, so when, when COVID came, it wasn't, it wasn't too much of a change, really, because um, um, our operating model um, already had this workflow. And we've been working on these workflows for, for, for years um, so, in fact, COVID wasn't an opportunity to develop um, uh, newer systems, but it, w- it just gave us uh, more time to enhance um, mm. our systems further. I mean, R&D-wise, we, we invest hundreds of thousands in R&D just on IT. Um, and, um, uh, and, 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 and that, uh, you know, uh, allows... Well, that's interesting. You know, it, it allows the, um, the, the whole operating model to be, mm. uh, be seamless. Yes. Have you ever thought about selling that as a, uh, you know, like a standalone service as opposed to uh, having to be a, a partner with you? Have you ever thought about thinking, well, I wonder if I could sell that, you know, that sort of model bit that, that says, right, off you go. Yeah. You've got to implement it. You've got to do it. But I can tell you it's been refined and refined and refined and you continually keep refining or it's just not something you want to do. Oh, no, so I comply. Um, uh, you've heard of I comply. So before yeah, yeah. I comply came around, we had our governance systems, IT systems already in place. Um, uh, and um, we could have commercialized it. Um, wh- when I comply came in, so I mean, they're doing really well. Uh, Rajiv is up, I think, is, uh, is um, uh, uh, that's a sort of um, uh, standalone um, hmm. system that, all, uh, that, that exists. But when it first launched it, um, uh, our IT guys already sort of looked at it as a, there's another um, uh, um, chap on the market and he's providing, um, you know, a similar sort of uh, governance structure to what we've already built. Um, yeah. And I said, that's good on him because um, uh, that's a standalone thing. And if, uh, if I wanted to commercialize it, I would have done that before him because we had it right, okay. at, at that time. Um, and um, uh, we took the decision that it's, um, uh, it's not in isolation. Um, it's part of a fuller package. Right. Um, and um, it is important that you link in governance with HR, with marketing, with um, mm-hmm. training especially. And uh, the unity with all of this makes a practice successful. Oh, um, yeah, it's like an uh, ecosystem. You know, it's, it's, it's a right. full ecosystem. Um, and uh, that's the view I took. Um, uh, and, and, and that's the view. Uh, I, I use, that's the process that we're running with. 
Mm. It must be quite interesting as well, because then when you have looking at your partners, not only must they be, you know, good dentists, good business people, good communicators, but they've also got to buy in <laughs> to your ecosystem. Because mm. I, I imagine there's some people who say, well, no, no, I want to sort of do it my way. And then, then I presume they just don't become partners. Do you sort of interview? Do they come to you or do you go to them? Or is it a bit of both? A bit of both because um, you have to identify and headhunt um, uh, suitable guys, especially um, strong associates that are part of your team already. Um, and then the, um, uh, we get approached a lot with, uh, um, especially for new startups. Um, uh, so that's something to consider. That's a, that's a bigger risk um, with mm. new startups. So we've got to be more particular um, about vision um, and, uh, you know, uh, to make sure that they, the, the visions are aligned. Uh, but, mm. but to answer your question regarding um, uh, to buy into an ecosystem, it's, it's really, it's as simple as, um, you know, you've, you've bought a car. And the car itself has um, uh, some functions. It's got a gearbox, it's got a pedal, it's got a brake, um, uh, it's got wheels, um, uh, and it works. Um, so now if he's going to start changing that, it yeah, has to don't be fiddle. <laughs> for it to be changed. Um, and if it's a good reason, then we'll change it for everyone. Um, uh, mm. But it's, 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 um, if it's uh, something that you just want to create it for the sake of creating it, then it, it, it has to be... There has to be a reason behind it. Um, and I really mm -hmm. do take a lot of feedback from partners, uh, even associates, um, mm. uh, where uh, systems can be refined. And uh, ultimately, the, the, the whole ecosystem is developed clinically led um, so that the fr frontline staff, dentists, partners are able to feed back. Um, mm. uh, we have this two-way engagement regularly, mm. and formally as well. Um, but that's smart thinking, is it? Because that's kind of the yeah. pseudo Brailsford way, isn't it? That's the marginal gains, yeah, isn't it? If you get everybody chipping in with little tiny suggestions of things that can be improved, if yes. you can then extrapolate that across your group, yeah, yeah. the yeah. impact it has is, is massive. So they don't need to be big things. Yeah. Those small things exactly can make that. a big difference. Exactly. And, that, and that's how the systems get refined. And then we, we sort of capture that within the IT and the developments and then the training side of it as well. Um, mm. uh, so... Yeah, it's um, it, it, as you say, massive it, ongoing development, isn't it? You know that it, you were saying the expense to keep refining and keep refining yeah. and keep refining, which is great because it's not like it's done. You know, right yeah, there you no. go. Here's version. Here's it's version not, one, yeah. and we never give you a version two. No, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, we've got seven developers full time working um, on our systems. Um, uh, yeah, so um, uh, both from the training perspective, from the business development perspective, um, uh, and. Um, uh, everything from, uh, say, the, for example, the training side, for instance, um, uh, I think we've got um, 11, 12 trainers, um, except uh, for, for the group. And it's only a small group. It's not a huge group. But then that gets fed back to the development team to refine the systems to support training. Um, uh, so it's, it's, it's a constant loop um, that we're investing. Um, so there's, there's 12 operating practices. Um, we, we've got in partnership, um, six MOS contracts. Um, we've got, um, uh, about eight more practices in the pipeline. Um, uh, sort of, um, uh, mixture between, uh, new squat practices and, um, existing practices. Um, everything that we've got, um, is self-funded. Um, so it's not, um, uh, it's not VC, but although we've, we've had a, a uh, yeah, so it's, it's, we've, had a, we've had several conversations um, with um, uh, private equity firms, um, and um, so far it's um, it's all self-funded. Um, there's no bank loans on any of it, um, and um, it's an organic growth. And I think that also um, is in line with uh, my belief, which is um, try you know to get loans, try to stay away from interest, etc. And, and, and that's that's part of the belief that in Islam, um, and I've sort of stuck with that, and it's um, uh, and it served its purpose well. Uh, so we've not we've zero leveraged. Um, our EV value is very strong, um, and um, uh, I think it, it gives me more peace uh, uh, in in terms of. I mean, we kind of have uh, fifty practices um, leveraging off what we've got, um, but but then I've got this uh, cloud over my head regards to the debt. Um, I think the vision was always there, but to then 
support a centralized system um, to make sure that partners are well supported and each practice is uh, progressing um, and being as successful as what it, sh- what it can be and what it should be. Uh, it requires a heck of a lot of developments. Um, so it's easy to get a partner and pie practice, practice together. And, and that's your joint venture partnership model, but it's not what the, 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 the reality of it is. Um, and when you are um, uh, having a responsibility um, towards a partner um, and you, you're promising um, and, and you're ensuring that uh, the practice will be a success, then everything around it, the structure, systems, HR, recruitment, marketing, IT, um, training, accountancy, everything around it um, is on point. So to be able to get to that, there's, there, there requires not just an off-the-shelf um, implementation, but a lot of development and a trial and testing um, uh, scenario. So what I then did was I launched my second practice in Birmingham, which is still standing today. Um, it's doing well, um, uh, which was, um, you know, uh, over 130 miles away from where Blackpool is um, uh, to make sure that this, the systems that we've developed over the, over the next three years, since 2006, seven, um, uh, you know, can be implemented and can we can see that they work. Um, the IT development systems uh, started to be formed. I started to get the team together. Um, and then practice number three, practice number four, they were all wholly owned by Synergy. And the reason why I had to do that is because I've got to make sure that um, if I'm losing money, it's my money and no one else's money. Um, uh, you know, and um, if I've lost it, you know, there's no loans to pay off and I've just lost it. Life goes on. Um, uh, but they were very successful. Um, and then uh, slowly we, we sort of um, uh, progressed more and more organically, uh, reinvested a lot centrally, um, recruited the right individuals, um, uh, you know, the heads of departments, um, moved into our larger um, HQ. Um, and then at the time, um, it took 10 years, um, a good 10 years to build the systems, even though, you know, I had a lot of mentorship from um, uh, uh, friends from uh, outside of dentistry, um, running similar models or, or sim- similar multi, um, uh, multi-site businesses. So we um, uh, progressed with... Um, uh, new acquisitions um, and um, yeah so the, the model was trialed and tested thoroughly before it was um, uh, put to open market um, uh, in fact my first partnership was in 2010 um, uh, in, in the Birmingham practice um, a lot of refinements had to be done in terms of um, central support services etc mm. um, and um, uh, here we are so it wasn't just something that uh, uh, you know you can progress very quickly with uh, mm. You have to. You're off with. I think. I think the difference, Super, is that that you 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 started with something much bigger in mind. You were stress testing those systems. You were seeing could it work in Blackpool, and if it works in Blackpool, could I also manage it in Birmingham? Mm. You know, could I do it remotely? Whereas I think lots of people they buy one practice and then they think I might get another. Yes. Oh, I might. Uh, oh, suddenly they end up with three practices. There's no integration of systems mm. and processes. There's no thought about how it's going to link. Whereas, obviously, from the beginning, you were saying, right, this is going to get bigger. And if I'm going to add more things in, mm. it, it needs to be simple. And going back to that thing about obsessing about systems and processes, that was obviously in your mind from day Absolutely. one. It needs to be robust. Yeah. Uh, this is the foundation um, which needs to be, uh, the piling needs to be in. The, the the flooring needs to be yeah. in uh, before you start building the mm. walls and um, you know it needs to be uh, the roof leaks needs to be watertight before the services uh, internally can be placed mm. in so you know it's uh, you, you gotta have have to have a look at it holistically um, it's just a shame yeah. that if I was in the same shoes um, uh, as a partner wanting to come into a um, a, a team um, and the services weren't uh, uh, proportionate or they weren't appropriate. Um, I'd feel aggrieved, um, uh, and I, I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd feel um, that the systems yeah. could, uh, are not there to support what my original vision was. Mm. So, to to, mm. to reverse it is is um, is what I've done. Yeah, you, you've obviously got quite a sizable team, and, and 
you're very articulate, you're very clear about your own thinking. Uh, how do you communicate that vision to your to your team? Because obviously you need everybody putting in the in the same direction, you know, with the same attitude of what you're trying to achieve. What mm. system do you use to make sure that people mm. constantly stay on and on keep line? The culture. Yeah, and you guys get the culture yeah, of your of you your work. business. I think c- c- culture is extremely important. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, so you, what, what you mean? You've got a um, a, a specific requirement for the business you've, um, you've you've created your job spec. You've created a role. You've created the monitoring um, um, uh, measurements. You've created your KPIs, and then you recruit against that. Um, and then you've got your regular um, weekly, monthly meetings with your heads of departments, and then allow and empower your heads of department to run their own mini departments. Um, uh, the communication uh, needs to be there, but that's all mechanical and that's all structural and that's all sort of um, uh, systemized. Okay. Um, the other element to it is the emotion and the motivation and the softer skills. And, and that we do a lot of that with our team um, uh, in terms of events. Um, we, we, we're planning on, um, uh, you know, such like a um, synergy skiing trip for all the staff. Um, uh, we have um, uh, summer barbecues, we have um, uh, uh, Christmas parties, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all of this softer um, supports and all of this softer stuff um, that as humans um, uh, you value uh, are not just to come to a, to mm-hmm. a workplace which is um, uh, monotonous and um, mechanical. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's important. I think the, 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 um, the Bruce Lee scenario of um, uh, managing uh, emotion and and system uh, 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 works extremely well. Mm. And I think you're right. We spend a lot of time doing, you know, our, our work during the day. So I think it's incumbent upon us to try and make that as enjoyable and as fulfilling and as rewarding as, mm. as possible. Because if, if for only for selfish reasons, it's more likely that people are going to stay in that business. So you get kind of continuity of, mm. of people in the business. Yeah. But also you do want people to enjoy the journey. Yeah, with exactly. You, and and, and that, that is the, um, uh, the, the underpinning, um, our culture, which is that we're part um, of the same team, we are um, sailing in the same boat, and we will come across waves. Um, we will come across, um, you know, turbulence. We will come across a lot of um, uh, larger sharks in the sea. Um, but you know, you gotta, <laughs> uh, you gotta ride through it. You gotta sail through it together, um, and you gotta hold on tight to your ropes. Um, uh, so long as we are in the right direction. Um, it's going to be a bumpy ride and um, there will be times mm. when uh, the waves will settle down and you'll enjoy the uh, the mm. sun on your head and um, a, 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 a clearer landscape. Um, but uh, we're all in it together and we're all benefit. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Is there is there an end game in sight? Where, where, where does this, where does this look limit. like in five, ten no, years' really time? The sky's the limit. There's no, there's no um, set. Uh, because we aren't governed by... Um, uh, external uh, funders who have a requirement on their side to have a three to five year cycle um, uh, for mm. uh, investments and then uh, equity release. Um, the, the, the there's no there's no um, uh, demand on us uh, to be able to perform uh, in terms of multiple sites mm. and then um, selling it all off. Uh, uh, our partners mm. are uh, you know are comfortable to where they are. Um, they are um, the, the, the clinical dentists. Um, they're hands-on. They, they love the dentistry. Um, they're upskilling. Um, they're providing their uh, uh, the service that they want to provide. At the same time, the businesses are doing very well. So um, mm. uh, to sell that off uh, uh, would be would, would not be part of the, um, the vision. Mm. And um, uh, there, there's no end game. Um, I think uh, it's about growth yeah. and um, it's about um, offering this opportunity, this very unique opportunity to a lot of um, new partners. Mm. Um, because mm. I think the word unique, spot on, Zubair. I think there'll be a lot of people listening to this episode quite envious of the fact that you have the the, the freedom of not being on a, a treadmill of satisfying a fund or, someone else. or a bank or exactly somebody else. That. I think having that, there, I think there'll be a lot of people looking, thinking that is a model that I wish I had, but 
it's obviously a very difficult thing to achieve. And I think it's probably a combination. I think your your timing was spot on with the new NHS contract coming in 2006, just as you were qualifying. But then credit to you for taking the opportunity. There would have been other people in your year group who then went and became associates for mm. two, three, five years. And through that intervening period, values, goodwill values shot up. And so it would have been much harder to do what you, you did a few years later. But you 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 grab the opportunity at that right time, so it's kind of well played in in that respect. It's a bit like a wealth curation scheme for dentists in a way, isn't it? You know, they they yeah. get the opportunity to to take some risk, but ultimately they've got you as as you were mentored and someone exactly. gave you guidance yeah. and yeah. advice. Yeah. yeah, they've got you with them to help them run their journey, and I, I think that's part of almost like a. I'm trying to think of that. What's that thing they say? You know, if you give a man a fish, he can eat or something, but you teach a man how to fish and he can eat for the rest of yeah. his life. And it's a, the same sort of thing. You can give someone a good job, but actually, especially COVID showed that being an associate is maybe not the best, <laughs> the best place to be in. Mm. And, and obviously we hope that nothing like that's going to, this is going to happen again. But what you're doing is effectively putting them in a position where they can, they can fish for the rest exactly of their right. life. Um, I think it's, that's brilliant. So I think it's, it's really it's, good. It's what you said is um, uh, you are, uh, you know, you, you, you're not just giving them wealth, but you're giving them a lifestyle. Um, and, um, mm -hmm. and, and that has to marry up. So it's not um, working six days a week or, you know, it's, it's a lifestyle that you have to, you have to, um, uh, uh, you know, create. Um, and, and that mm. builds back to our original starting conversation about your health because all of this um, yeah. uh, is only temporal and um, you know mm. you'll be spending um, uh, 20 years making money but then you'll be spending 20 years on your health to make it better again so you know you you, you want to try yeah. to make sure that the balance is right from the outset so that you're not overworking mm. mentally and physically and um, uh, partners no, are um, uh, you know they appreciate that that balance um, that what, uh, harmony yeah. between uh, wealth and lifestyle and, and I think that is what we can we, we, we offer lifestyle rather than anything else really mm. absolutely no, brilliant. Zubair, we, we, we could talk all day I find it a fascinating subject I think your story really is a, a, a great one um, but I want to move on to our, our last two questions we always mm -hmm. we ask our guests we always ask them the same okay. the same two questions mm -hmm. and, and the first one if you could be a fly on the wall with somebody in a situation where would you like to be just sitting there on the sidelines looking in on a on a certain scenario play out okay okay Okay, so um, my my six year old claims that he can do five k running, right? <laughs> so I've seen him run a couple of k on our treadmill, um, and he claimed um, last week that he did five k. I had to give him a, a you know a, a, a treat at the end of it, of course. Um, so what he what 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 his I've, I wasn't in the room when he um, when he did the five k but he said he promised that he did it so I want to know um, that he could do it again um, uh, uh, as a fly on the wall or whether he just stood on the side and letting the treadmill just uh, let the treadmill do the fire. Yeah. I think that is one thing that I like to witness. He's only six. Um, uh, he's done. I've, I've witnessed a couple of k um, on the treadmill, uh, but his elder brother also Brilliant. vouches for him. Um, uh, but whenever he gets a treat, the elder brother shares the treat. So I just ah oh, okay. So <laughs> is there a motivation, motivation in there? Yeah. That's, that's one thing <laughs> certainly. Um, Brilliant. Excellent, excellent. And then our second question is: um, <laughs> if you could meet somebody, um, is there one particular person you'd like to sit down and, and have a meal with and a chat? Living or dead, fictional. Okay. It has yeah. to be Muhammad Ali, um, uh, you know, uh, amazing. Oh, okay. um, I, I think what he's, um, Muhammad Ali or Bruce Lee, I think two, one, of the, two, one or two, I think, thinking about it now. So, and the reason why, I think they both share this, a similar ethos um, with regards to mm. being good at what you do technically, but at the same time, um, making sure that the emotional, um, the human uh, side of it um, is also married up. And, and, and I think that mm. that's what made Muhammad Ali who he was. Uh, technically, he was just brilliant. Um, and um, in, in a ring, he'll have a conversation with you whilst you're fighting him. And um, uh, and that shows confidence <laughs> and that shows that, you know, he's a human. Um, and uh, uh, the, the I, th I think I'd love to have that. 
Yeah, Brilliant. I think that would be, yeah. yeah. And, and I think there's a lot of crossover, you know, if you look at, you know, yourself and what you're doing, you know, the technical stuff that you do, but also that mindset and, and wanting to be the best, you know, they're, they're, they're good people to look at. Bruce Lee would be an interesting one, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah a very interesting one. Yeah. It? Yeah. Well, I've absolutely loved the chat, Zubair. It's been wonderful. Learn, Thank you. Learn fabulous, I'm, sure Thank our you so I'm sure our listeners are going to take bundles from it. Um, so yeah, no, we, we wish you well with your continued journey and we'll be, we'll be watching it with a, with a keen eye to see how Thank it goes. Thank you very much, chaps. Thank you very much. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Zubair. My goodness, Zubair Bagassi. What an absolute fabulous yeah. story. Fascinating, wasn't it? Fascinating, wasn't it? And, and I think the one that, or a couple of things that I tore out was the fact that he hasn't got any debt. <laughs> yeah. So as, as you said, you know, there's a lot of people who've grown their practices to, what was that, 12 yeah. plus eight partnership yeah. ones or eight more on the pipeline and then some other ones, um, you know, on the back of uh, being able to sleep well at night. I, th- I think that was a real powerful I think one. it's incredible. And what I love is he really... Um, took opportunities as they came, mm. you know, being mentored by the, um, you know, the, the famous Bandau family in Birmingham when he was still in VT and then seeing the 2006 new contract opportunity yeah, and definitely. winning an NHS contract. You know, lots of people looking backwards now, you go, oh, well, yeah, that, that seems quite obvious, but this was new stuff at the time. Mm. So he's obviously quite a, a confident, but also a visionary guy to do those things. And, and that set him on the path. Um, for the success that he's well, had, it's thoroughly I, deserved. You know, I remember running the bank, and okay, it was uh, before all of those times. But you know, if you had someone who came as a as a VT, <laughs> he said, "Oh, I think I might like to set up a dental practice." The yeah. answer was a bit, "No, no yeah. really, go away." You know, mm. cut your teeth, excuse the pun, yeah. um, learn a bit more, then maybe come back yeah. in a couple of years. So it's a very, very you know, to go and well. present when really he is a VT, mm. you know, to produce that. Oh, yeah. And to, to sort of, it almost makes you wonder whether, <laughs> whether and I don't think it was because he's such a good, confident guy, but it makes you wonder whether, you know, when he came out of the meeting or when they sent the letter, he was like, oh, man, now I've got to do it. Yeah. Now oh, I've got a contract, yeah. I'll flip. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, he, like I say, and he's, uh, he's trying something who's very thoughtful, very aware of the importance of keeping himself mentally and physically mm. fit. That obviously filters through to his team, making sure there's a good culture. It sounds like a, a really good environment and he absolutely deserves it. Yeah, no, it's been brilliant. Yeah. It, was, it was a good, great guest. Yeah, great it was. Guest. Really, really enjoyable. Thank you for listening to this episode of Dentology, where we discuss the business of dentistry. If you like what you heard, please do subscribe where you found this episode. That would be amazing. And also follow us on Instagram.